Hello, this is Julia Whitup with Creative Journey, and we have with us this morning David James, who is the author of Discovering Your Marvel Magnificent Mind. I should have written that down. <laughs> so tell us more about your book and how that could help us. Well, good morning. I'm, I'm grateful to be with you today. Discover Your Magnificent Mind is a book that I wrote last year that's been published in the last month by Bay, uh, Balboa Press, which is part of Hay House. Hay House is the largest metaphysical self-help publishing company in the world. And so it's a wonderful opportunity to get this message out. As a clinical hypnotherapist, I work in my Beverly Hills office every day, helping people make positive change in their lives. Some are as easy as, quote unquote, easy as stop smoking and losing weight. Others want to learn how to speak in public or overcome the fear of flying, manifest a relationship of their dreams, uh, be more creative in their financial world. And uh, so I decided to take all of the years of my work that I've done with this and put it into book form. And so I published this book this last month, and it's a tiny little book, only 100 pages of text. It's 124 total pages from front cover to back, but actual text itself is only 100 pages and I intentionally wrote it that way because what happens is in this day and age people have a hard time just being able to sit down and read um, long books unless you're academically oriented mm -hmm. so I wanted to write a book that you could read over the matter of it maybe two or three sittings and understand the basic principles of the power of both the conscious and the subconscious mind and in that process, learn how to use your mind to your benefit. Good idea. <laughs> I recently read that you can treat allergies with hypnosis. Have you done any of that? Yes, medical hypnosis is one of the most fascinating fields of study right now. Uh, like I said, for the longest time, we've known that you can control blood pressure. We've known that when people break large bones, like you know their, their femur or a, a large arm bone, Harvard Medical School did a study that showed that when people um, uh, use hypnosis in addition to traditional therapies, they heal in a third of the time. Uh, we know now that people are, uh, in Europe, they're using uh, hypnosis only to do brain surgery with instead of anesthesia. Uh, so the United States has not gotten that bold in the medical practice yet, but in Europe they are opening up people's heads and doing brain surgery. Instead of using anesthesia, they're using hypnotic anesthesia. So uh, asthma is well treated with hypnosis. Um, high blood pressure, as I said, is well treated with hypnosis. Um, any, anything that is kind of psychosomatically oriented. So allergies would be a wonderful example of that. And especially now I'm getting a lot of practice with that, treating myself because this in Los Angeles is spring allergy time. So <laughs> I'm a lot on, on, on doing that. So, uh, you know, you can, IBS, irritable bowel syndrome is another wonderful, wonderfully receptive uh, process to the to uh, hypnosis. So uh, there's just so many exciting avenues to learn how to heal your body. I mean, even all the way back to Parkinson's and ALS, and I have some stories around that if you want later. Uh, so yeah, medical hypnosis and the power of the mind to heal the body is one of the number one fields of study right now. That's fabulous. Even Parkinson's. Mm -hmm. I have a client that has ALS actually, it's not Parkinson's, but it's just as bad. And she came to me uh, in a wheelchair to, to work with me to get over depression because again, anxiety and depression are both really powerfully affected by hypnosis. And given a lot of the work that I do with mind-body medicine, I said, I would be glad to work with you to help you alleviate this depression. I said, would you wanna play with me a little bit? Let's pretend that maybe your symptoms could get better. And she said, sure, what have I got to lose? And so in three months, we had her out of her wheelchair and walking with a walker. Wow. And now she's walk we're getting ready to move her into walking with a cane alone. So she's actually reversing symptoms of ALS. And so this is not, you know, all the exclaimers. It doesn't work for everybody, but it does work for people. And so it's, it's really fascinating. 
and it can work mm -hmm. and some sometimes it's maybe just a matter of figuring out what the unconscious resistance is yes you know and that's the whole notion of the placebo effect uh, back in the days of uh, developing and it's to this day for that matter uh, when they try a new drug out on people you know if the drug works 51 percent of the time they say okay well this is a marketable drug that we can use on the market uh, if it works 50 percent or less of the time they say oh it's just a placebo in other words is we might as well have given them a sugar pill but the interesting thing is why does it work 49 percent of the time if it's a sugar pill it's sometimes a sugar pill works that off much if they think it's going to work exactly and so you know there is just in my book there is case study after case study even though it's a little book there's just lots of evidence where people have been told that they were going to get better uh, by having, uh, uh, for example, uh, in Japan, uh, there was a study with asthma, which is very effective with hypnosis. And they said, okay, we have two inhalers, a red one and a blue one. Now, the, thank you so much for being part of this experiment. The red one actually has an irritant in it that's going to activate your bronchial spasms in asthma. But don't worry, we have this blue one, which is even more powerful, that will take those away. And so if you're willing to participate, sign all the forms. They did. They took the red inhaler, and within a minute, they're wheezing, and they're having difficulty breathing. And so immediately, they said, okay, here's the powerful new medicine in this blue inhaler. Breathe it in. Within a minute, symptoms gone. The problem was that the... The only substance in either inhaler was a saline solution that converted to a puff. There was nothing in either. It was the mind that made the people have the allergic, the allergic reaction, the asthmatic reaction, and the mind that caused the healing. Yes, it's a very tricky thing. The problem with psychosomatic illnesses is it really does hurt. Mm -hmm. It does, and it absolutely hurts, you know, and, and when, when my clients, I have, I have one client right now who I, I'm going to weave enough of the identity so that there's no revelation because everybody has absolute confidentiality, but this client um, tends to read about a um, disease on Google and then starts experiencing this, the symptoms of it. Because she and, read the symptoms <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and, and, and he or she then goes to the doctor, the medical doctor, and uh, they say, I'm sorry, you've got nothing wrong, and, and so this person has gone to psychiatrists and psychologists, finally comes to me, and we walk the symptoms back. And so finally, I said, you know, the best thing you can do for yourself is stay off of Google. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And that but they're real. I mean, they're real. I can see real rashes on their arm, or I can hear the wheezing in their body, or I can see the spasming. And so we, you know, we put them into hypnotic trance and, and walk it back. But nonetheless, it's still real. So when somebody says they have a psychosomatic illness, uh, they're not faking. You know, you know, they're not just making it up. I mean, their 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 mind is causing them to believe that they're ill, and so they have the symptoms, which is different than psychogenic illness which is your mind believes that you're ill and their body actually develops the illness. There's a difference in, in the two. It's a very distinct you know, kind of fine line. But in both instances, I do a lot of work that's very helpful in that regard. Okay. That would, yeah, I started thinking, boy, these allergies, if it's an auto, if it's an autoimmune disease, it should be able to be treated with hypnosis. Mm -hmm. Yes. And again, not everybody is responsive, but more are than not. And um, I, I happen to have the privilege of, privilege of working in a medical group in Beverly Hills. It's two internal medicine doctors, a psychiatrist, a nurse practitioner, and me. Mm -hmm. And very often, uh, the, the focus of the practice is people who have HIV and AIDS and are coming off of drugs and they're addicted. And so the, the medical doctors will say, you know, instead of giving you all of your pain medicine this month, I'm only going to give you half. And then I want you to go down the hall, make an appointment with Dr. James, let him work with you hypnotically to reduce your pain and anxiety. If it doesn't work, come back and I'll give you the rest. We're not going to 
you know, we don't want you to freak out. Yeah. But I've only had one person go back. Wow. Because you get their anxiety and pain level down enough that they're able to manage um, the stress of coming through the, the and it's not just that they, they're going to 12 step meetings. They're, they're going to rehab things, but hypnosis is a powerful tool to help people change their relationships to their body through changing their relationships to their mind. Yes. I love it. <laughs> um, so what are, what are some of the most dramatic instances? Can you think of some dramatic instances to tell us about? Well, in, in, in the medical field, I think getting somebody out of a wheelchair and reversing symptoms of ALS is pretty dramatic. Well, yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was pretty dramatic. Yeah, there, there's, a, there's a case in um, France where a um, young woman went to Lourdes, that place of healing, mm -hmm. and she got blessed with holy water, and her eyes were dead. And she had not ever been able to see out of her eyes. The retinas had actually atrophied. They, they just did not work. So she had an experience of being blessed with this holy water. And then all of a sudden she could see. And she was able to learn to read. Well, the interesting thing was that when she was tested by ophthalmologists in France, the retinas were still dead. In other words, those eyes still weren't working. And yet now she could see. And so one of the things that we've learned, and I don't ever diminish uh, people's religious faith because I used to serve as an Episcopal priest before I retired from that, but that the power of the mind creates incredible things. In this case, a blind woman is able to see. Uh, like I said, we're getting people out of wheelchairs. Uh, there are cases where uh, cancerous tumors diminish when we use hypnotherapy, as I said before. People routinely in the United States do root canals under hypnotic anesthesia and nothing else. Uh, so like I said, there's just case after case on the medical front of, of miracles happening every day when people learn how to use their mind better. Yes, it's fascinating. And you put freedom in the title to your book. Mm -hmm. What? Tell us more about that. Um, we all are victims of our upbringing whether it's for good or ill. In other words, as a child is born and up to about age nine, I don't know if you've seen, but kids really absorb everything. They take everything in. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so authority figures up to about the age of nine kind of establish uh, what we call programs, belief programs, which are a combination of thoughts and beliefs and feelings and the way things ought to be, what good girls do and what bad boys don't. And, you know, if one family is oriented towards financial success, then that's kind of embedded in, in, in the child's unconscious mind, subconscious mind. If the family is more oriented towards social justice and political activism, kids very often are raised with that. But the point is that we all come to adulthood with lots of programming. Mm -hmm. Then in addition to our family, our church or our culture or our country or our entertainment system, um, all add to, and we find that we cannot make the kinds of changes that we want to make. And so in a minute, when we talk about how to increase prosperity in your life, we'll talk about this kind of cultural conditioning. But all of us at some point say, you know, there's got to be a better way or a broader way or a more magnificent way to live. And you have to find freedom from your past uh, rather than being chained. Because the interesting thing, of course, is that the past doesn't exist. <laughs> it's only a memory in yeah. our in our in our brain and the future of course does not exist either it's only a fantasy of what may or may not happen the only thing that happens exists is this present precious irreplaceable moment and so and yet we are so attached to these memories that run unconsciously in our subconscious mind that we discover that we're not able to make the kinds of changes that we want so people come to me and we work on, I use a lot of computer imagery, we, we work on new downloads or removing old software in the programming of the subconscious mind so that people are able then to make the kinds of changes that give them a greater sense of freedom and the ability to be more the people that they think they'd like to be in their lives. Now, what do you mean you use computers a lot? You have them look at the computer? No, I just computer language. Oh, computer language, okay. Because that's such a familiar Yeah. Word. 
even as, as old as I am, I know the difference between hardware and software, you know? <laughs> and so, um, yeah. yeah, we just talk about the fact that, it, you know, it's an old program and we're going to disable the old program and download a new one. And uh, especially the people who are really tech savvy, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I'm sure that that's something they can understand immediately. Mm -hmm. And probably that's the same thing they used to do with removing curses. Well, yes, and that I talk about that in the book too. You know, in 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 the healing world, the mind body world, you know, we talk about the placebo effect. The word placebo literally means from the Latin, I will help. Um, and there's the nocebo effect, N-O-C-E-B-O, the nocebo effect. And that literally means I will hurt. And in back in the day, all right, uh -huh. you know, in shamanistic cultures, uh, in primitive cultures, a shaman or a witch doctor would put a curse on you, saying in three days you will die of a strangulation around your neck. And, and sure enough, three days later, they were gone. Well, what we've discovered is that, remember I gave you the illustration earlier about the inhalers that mm -hmm. you know, give you the red one versus the blue one. What we've discovered is that people with authority over us can make pronouncements that are really, in effect, hypnotic suggestions that come into our mind and affect themselves in the body. So, you know, um, if... Somebody says, a doctor says to you, you know, you have cancer and you have three weeks to live. You better go home and get your affairs in order. Uh, most people go, oh, my God, I've got cancer and I've got three weeks to live. I better go home and get my affairs in order. And three weeks later, they're dead. But there are some people that say, no. I refuse. <laughs> yeah. No. You know, the doctors put curses on people. You know, I, I work with men not to get too delicate here, but who suffer from erectile dysfunction. Because the doctor said, well, you know, you're at this age, you know, and you're never going to be able to have that kind of satisfying sexual experience again. And, and men come to me and we say, no. You know, if there's physiological basis, you know, they're taking high blood pressure medicine, then that really is a, a challenge. But if it's purely psychological, because somebody said no, mm -hmm. then you replace that no with a yes. And, and we help people discover that they really have more power over their lives than they think they do. Yes, good. That's fabulous. Tell us more about increasing wealth or prosperity. That sounds interesting. Well, unless you're a priest or a nun, monk or a nun that's taken a vow of poverty, mm -hmm. most of us would like more money in our lives. We'd like to live a life that's a little easier. Mm -hmm. We'd like to take a trip or two more. We might like to have a more current version of this or a more, uh, you know, satisfying uh, uh, entertainment system or being able to help people and causes that we deeply believe in, but we're not able to because of our financial picture. Well, when people come to me for hypnotherapy to increase their, manifestation, their manifestations of abundance, one of the things that we do first is we look to their programming. We look to the soft load that's been downloaded in their lives. Uh, again, having been a, an Episcopal priest, I am not anti-religious, but if you grow up in a family where the religious belief is, you hear the quote over and over again from the Bible, which is actually a misquote, but nevertheless, you hear this quote over and over again that says that the love of money is the root of all evil. Mm -hmm. Then as an adult, as a, you know, whether you're a 19 year old adult or a 45 year old adult, and you want to start increasing your portfolio and bringing wealth to you, you have this unconscious program going inside you that says the love of money is the root of all evil. Mm -hmm. When that happens, then you have a block and you cannot bring finances to you. Mm -hmm. or, you know, for example, my parents grew up during the recession, or the depression, rather. Mm -hmm. And so if I heard it once, I heard it a hundred times, that famous Benjamin Franklin axiom, a penny saved is a penny earned, or <laughs> money doesn't grow on trees, you know, or we have to be careful with our money. Well, when you have that program running in your subconscious mind, then that is a block 
to being able to bring more money into your life as well. So there's been a lot of interest in what's called the law of attraction in the last 20 years in our culture. And the law of attraction says that we do not manifest in our lives what we want. We manifest in our lives what we are. So if what we want is a better financial picture, but we have programs that say, oh, no, 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 money's no good, money, or, you know, or you know, you're not capable, or you know, what, any hundred, of, hundred blocks, then that's the message that goes out to the universe, and the universe says, okay, I'm cool. Whereas if we can upload positive, empowering messages that indeed money is only energy, that money can be used for fantastic change in the world to support your family and your friends and to send kids to school and to have a wonderful life. If you can truly begin to believe this and we remove those other blocks through hypnosis, then people start seeing a change in their financial picture. Yes, I'm sure they do. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Uh, I can't remember what else was in that program, in that title. It was quite a long title. You had a little subtitle, too. Yeah, Discovering Your Magnificent Mind, Finding Freedom, Prosperity, and Healing. And we've actually covered all of those. Oh, yes, we have. Wow. Fabulous. Tell, tell us where we can get your book. Okay, the book can be, you can get it at Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, or BalboaPress.com. Now, here's a, a please, please, please on my part. You know, um, the world runs by computers nowadays. Right. If you go to Amazon and you type in, discover your magnificent mind, which is, of course, is the main title of the book, uh -huh. you'll get every other book but mine. For some reason, you know, you'll get Daniel Almond's power, you know, understanding how your mind works and Wayne Dyer's book. And they're all good books, but they're not my book that I want you to buy. Right. So what you have to do is you have to type in Discover Your Magnificent Mind, Dr. David James. Okay. You are David James. And in these hundred pages, not only do you get, um, um, not only do you get uh, information and, and learn how to use your mind, there are actually, you know, you can see it here, but actually uh, exercises and practices to do so that just like you're in my office, you are able to write your way into a new way of being you. So if you go to Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, discover your magnificent mind, DR, like Dr. David James, you'll get the book and it can be delivered overnight. Fabulous. Okay. Well, I want to thank you for being with us today. And oh, to be here. Thank you. Invite you to join our group at creativejourney.org. Mm -hmm. And we'll head on over to Amazon and buy your book. Thank you. Like I said, it's easy to read. I intentionally wrote it for a very, very busy person. It's written very conversationally. Just after having heard this conversation, when you read my book, you'll hear my voice talking in exactly the same way. This is not a tough read because I want it to make powerful change quickly. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. James. All right. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.